Bronxnet. Your voice, your views, your vision. The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of Bronxnet or the program underwriters. Well, February is Black History Month, and as we do every year, we bring you the topics that have perspectives that highlights the contributions, struggles, and stories of African Americans. Coming up on this episode, what would you do if you had a random search, only to find a record that your family member fought in the Civil War? Stay tuned for this remarkable story that's coming up on Perspectives with yours truly, Darren Ivey. What's on your mind? Let him know. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? Anything relevant to life you bring it to the table Whether you make a move solo or a movement with a stable No fables, you speak on your decisions Cause in the long run it's your voice, your views, your vision Keeping it real with many messages for you to know This ain't radio but DJ runs the show Entertainment he rocks it, politics he locks it The host with the most would handle any topic Don't forget to share your perspective which shines a light Cause it might make a difference in someone else's life well, thank you for joining us. I'm Darren Jaime, your host. And remember, you can also share your perspective with us on the web by logging on to www.bronxnet.org. And you also know backslash perspectives. Don't forget, we have a Facebook page, Bronxnet Perspectives. All you got to do is like us there and we'll send you some information about the show. And uh, you'll get to see some upcoming guests. Well, 2012 marks the 150-year anniversary of the Civil War, an era that still lives on. And it's one thing to read about the sacrifices of African Americans, but it's totally another thing to be able to trace your roots right back to a specific person. And joining me on the first episode of our Black History series is a well-known face to us here in the Bronx. She's the author of a book, Die Free, a heroic family tale, and she's also New York One anchor Cheryl Wills. And good to have you here with us. Darren, thank you for having me. Great. So the title of the book is Die Free, Heroic Family Tale, mm -hmm. and we encourage each and every one of you to go out and get it. Mm -hmm. But you do something where you're going back and you're actually retracing the family, mm -hmm. and in the process of retracing the family, you stumble on something big. And it was a stumble. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knew about Sandy Wills. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to tell you, Darren, you have the last name, all you have, Jaime, mm -hmm. Wills, all your life, right? You have no idea where it comes from. When I logged onto a website, a genealogy website, Ancestry.com, I started to see the name Wills appear over and over in Haywood County, Tennessee, and then it traced all the way back mm -hmm. to my great-great-great-grandfather, Sandy, who was bought as a slave by Edmund Wills, and that's how he got the name Wills. And I'm telling you, when you see something like that for the first time, mm -hmm. it blows your mind. Because now slavery is no longer just a history book. It becomes a part of you. It's your blood in your veins. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's shocking, mm -hmm. because we know that we were affected by slaves. We know that, you know, our family was bought by someone. Mm -hmm. And it's painful to think of it, but when you really see it in black and white, it is mind blowing and humbling mm -hmm. because it's like, whoa. Right. It so changes you, your whole perspective. So now, you, so now you see this and then you say, I gotta do something about it. Absolutely, because what I really saw was that Sandy Wills escaped from Edmund Wills' plantation, mm -hmm rounded up five of his enslaved brothers, if you please, mm -hmm. and they all went and fought with the United States Colored Troops in the Civil War. That is extraordinary. There are lots of stories of slaves who ran away to go fight in the Civil War. Very few, I'm not gonna say there are none, but very mm -hmm. few, if any, documented cases of all brothers, that many, who all fled and went and fought together for the same unit, and only one died. Talk to us about what you found to be the, particularly that stuck out about the whole family experience with the Civil War. Yeah, you know, there are so many things. I'm going to tell you this. The first thing was that I have all the enlistment papers mm -hmm. and that when you see, it, it touches your heart in so many ways. You see, you can almost see these 
proud men mm -hmm. who didn't even own themselves, whose families had been torn apart. And you can almost, by looking at the records, see them walking up to an enlistment officer and stating their name and stating their age. And they would have to guess their age because, remember, no one kept records right. of slaves. So they would guess around 23, around 18, and that was heartbreaking as well. But then you would see, this is the part I write about in my book, you would see something that would say occupation. And for all of the brothers, they would say slave. Mm -hmm. But when it came to my great-great-great-grandpa Sandy, he said farmer. Mm. Now, I'm looking at all of the records. Right. Slave, 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 farmer. Well, he was a slave just like the rest of them, but he did not believe it in his heart. That was a hallelujah moment for <laughs> me, Darren. Right. That was a hallelujah moment because it meant that he was almost a revolutionary, you know, with some chutzpah walking up. I'm a farmer. What? Right, you know what I mean? right, right. I'm not a slave like everybody don't else. Call me a slave. Now, I'm this a is, farmer. This is 1863. Mm -hmm. And the, the image that we have perpetuated about these brave men is that they were lowly and scared and no, you know, courage. But mm -hmm. the records that I found from the Civil War that were stored in the National Archives painted a completely different picture. Right. And, and one of the things that you're able to do is you're able to, to deal with some of the misconceptions of the yes. Civil War because there are a lot of misconceptions about the there Civil are. War, particularly when it comes to African-American involvement in the Civil War, slaves particularly. Um, so share a little bit about some of those misconceptions that you're able to tear apart. Absolutely. One of the misconceptions, Darren, is that, you know, people assume that the slaves were too scared to fight. And Glory brought, the movie Glory brought that out beautifully. They wouldn't let them do this. They only let them guard the fort. They wouldn't let them fight because they thought if they fought, you know, they're illiterate, they're stupid, they can only do what we tell them to do, and we don't have time to tell them what, we, what to do in the battle. Mm -hmm. But it turns out that all of these soldiers exceeded everyone's expectations. And in fact, they helped to turn the tide of the war. There was a great debate, Darren, from 1861 to 63. The Civil War had been going on and mm -hmm. no Africans were allowed to fight. And then when the Union, Abraham Lincoln's army, started to lose, they said, hey, maybe we should take a look <laughs> at yeah. them again, you know? Mm -hmm. And then they allowed them to fight. But you may be interested to know that my book is called Die Free because Frederick Douglass, when he was rallying to get Africans to fight in the war, he issued a proclamation, if you will, and said, it's better, gentlemen, to die free mm -hmm. than to live slaves. And that really resonated with me. And that became the title of the book. The yes. title of the book is Die Free, a heroic family tale. And so you go back and you're mm -hmm. able to retrace the family. Part of this is, has to be gut-wrenching because at oh. the same time, you're really finding out more about your family than probably in some ways you want to know, and then in some ways you do want to know. Yeah, I really wanted to know everything. And there were things that it hurt me to know, mm -hmm. like you said. But you have to face it. It hurt me to know that Sandy didn't get the same amount of money as the white soldiers. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It hurt me to know that when he was honorably discharged and injured, like all the, most of the soldiers were, from loud sounds from gunfire, many of them were deaf because mm -hmm. the cannons going off with no protection to their ears. You know, he didn't even bother to file because he was illiterate and the government gave them a hard time. So one, another hallelujah moment for me was when his widow, when he died about 15 years later, his widow filed for a pension mm -hmm. and the government did their usual, you know, not you. Mm. We, we really mean it for the white widows. You know, they didn't say that directly, but that's what, that's they, what they meant mean. by rejecting her, even though she proved that she was a, a wife of mm. a Civil War soldier. So she went back and forth with them, hired a lawyer, nine children she had, mm. and she was entitled to his death benefit as a soldier. And they kept rejecting and she kept going back. Imagine a former slave, mm -hmm. a widow with nine children going toe to toe from Haywood County, Tennessee with the mighty U.S. government in Washington, D.C. But that was, that was like fire shut up in my bones when mm -hmm. I was reading the back and forth between her and the government. Because then I said, you know what, Cheryl? There's nothing you can't do. Mm -hmm. Don't you ever lay down for anybody. You fight 
to get what is yours because if your great 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 grandmother could do it then the sky's the limit and you know what she won Darren Amazing she went. Yeah, she won, and I have all the paperwork to, to prove, prove it. it right? <laughs> stay with us. We want to stay with. You. We want you to stay with us too. We got Cheryl Wills with us. She is the author of the book *Die Free*, a heroic family tale. Coming up after the break, we're going to talk to her about her travels because this book is not only traveling nationally, it's traveling internationally as well. She just got back from Africa. She's going to give us a little bit more about that when we return right here on Perspectives. We can all be energy savers. <laughs> it's easy. Turn off lights. Use energy saving light bulbs. And turn off electronics and appliances when not in use. Make a change and we can really fly. Learn more at energy.gov slash kids. Hands can do incredible things. Now they can even help save a life with hands-only CPR. If you see an adult suddenly collapse, just call 911, then push hard and fast in the center of the chest until help arrives. Learn more at handsonlycpr.org. The magical thing about using energy wisely is that anyone can do it. Turn off lights. Use energy-saving light bulbs. And turn off computers and game systems when not in use. Make a change and we can really fly. Grab a grown-up and go online to energy.gov slash kids. Uh, Mom, I'm not going to go to college. What are you saying? You've got to go to college. Well, they offered me a job and... Son, college is much more important no. Yes. No, Mom. Yes. Anyways, it's my decision. Okay, well then decide what degree you're going to get because you will go to college. Their tomorrow depends on your words today. The Hispanic Scholarship Fund has the information you need to help your kids go to college. And we're back here on Perspectives. Our guest, Cheryl Wills, you see her on New York One as an anchor, but she is also the author of the book, as you saw, Die Free, A Heroic Family Tale. And uh, just to let you know, she's got the rave reviews of even the Reverend Al Sharpton, who writes the Die Free is a compare, uh, compelling American story. She writes with the flair of a novelist. And so you got some great people who uh, really have endorsed your work. Yeah. Uh, you got Al Sharpton, Reverend Al Sharpton, of course, and our good mutual friend Terry Williams mm -hmm. uh, wrote the foreword to your book. Mm -hmm. What do they say? What do people say when they get an opportunity to see, you know, not just, you know, your story, mm -hmm. but actually American history? Right. It is American history. And that's, you know, it's not just a black story. Black people are a part of American history from the first day to right now mm -hmm. and they loved me for putting it all out there Sharpton doesn't even endorse books really and he endorsed mine and I was so grateful Terry Williams you know she doesn't do a lot of endorsements she does some but you know they all supported me because they know that the Civil War when people talk about it they don't think about black people mm -hmm. they think about the war between the states the right. north and the south well the reality is that war was fought over slavery. And I recently spoke at a gathering with all white Civil War enthusiasts and I told them that. And they agreed with me. But you have some people who try to say, oh, it wasn't really about slavery. And I beg to differ. Yes, it was. Every part of it was. And when the Union won, slavery ended. So that goes to show you how much slavery was really how much hanging slavery. in the balance right. for that war. You've taken the story and this story, and not just done locally, you've gone nationally, you went over to Africa, yeah. and you had the opportunity to share a little bit 
at home in Africa. At home. Uh, what was that like? Oh, that was coming full circle. When I stepped off the plane, I wanted to kiss the ground because mm -hmm. I was the first in my family since whoever was put on that ship from the west coast of Africa and brought to America. No one in my family line had ever returned. Mm. And to go back to the historic um, country of Senegal, which is where a great deal of slaves were stolen from, were kidnapped and held in prisons on a place called Gory Island. They were taken from the mainland, shipped over in smaller groups to Gory Island, and they stayed there until the great big slave ship pulled up and they walked through that door of no return from that prison. And I had the great honor to stand in that doorway. And I'm telling you, I understand why people faint. You can almost feel the spirits of the people just chained up mm. and walking onto that ship, wondering, A, what did we do? B, where are we going? C, what fate is ahead of me? Chained like animals. And you felt that in there. But I had the great opportunity after I left that historic site to speak at an international conference with political leaders from all over the world um, about my book. And they were amazed. They had never heard the story in Africa. In never. That, can you imagine? They, they are not entirely familiar what happened to us mm -hmm. after we left. We are the lost children to them. Mm -hmm. They don't really know the history. They don't know that Africans who were shipped to America fought in every war. They don't know that we were scientists, that we did extraordinary things, that we had activists that fought against the oppression. They don't know. Mm -hmm. So when I was telling them, their eyes were wide open like, wow. I really get it now. Yeah. Yeah, because, see, for them, if you depend on the mass media, which people on both sides of the continent kind of do, well, we think that they are third world, poor people who don't, when actually they're very spiritual people, they're very loving people, and they believe in family. And on the flip side, when they see us, all they see is crime, drugs, the worst of us, and Oprah and Michael Jordan. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> and, 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 and that's it. And, you know, maybe Jay-Z now or Beyonce. Mm. But they don't see us in our totality with balance. So it was a tremendous honor to be there as a guest of President Wad of Senegal. And I got to go to the equivalent of what's the White House, mm -hmm. you know, or their state house. And it was an unbelievable moment just to go back there. And you know, Darren, I'm going to tell you, my ancestors made that happen. And that's the thing. Spiritually, they what? helped me go back home. So they open the door now, and as they open the door, they mm -hmm. open the door for you actually to walk in and Thank be able you. and be able to tell the story. Right. Kids have to know the story. I know. What's going to be done by you? Do you feel compelled now to really take the story, give it to others, and by way of kids, and just say, yeah. "Listen, this is this is history here, and you need to." And you Which I have been doing from the get go. Mm -hmm. I have been doing this even before I knew about Sandy. I would bring kids into the newsroom to give them exposure, so they could dream in vivid color, mm -hmm. and see and touch me, and know that what I am doing is accessible to you. Right. You know, when we were kids, how many newscasters brought? Not, not any. You see what I'm saying? So I always keep a door open at New York One. We have a wonderful open door policy with schools. And at the same time, once I learned about this, now I'm really in all the schools. Mm -hmm. You know, one school is about to make it part of their curriculum, this story. And I'm Beautiful. so proud of that because students need to know that you have a rich history. Right. You're not just a few snapshots on TV. Mm -hmm. You're a rich and bold and vibrant culture that's contributed more than music and dance. We right. love the music and we love the dance, but there's a whole lot, but more. A whole lot more. There yeah. are freedom fighters, there are scientists, there are educators, there's so much more. So we just have to really push that into our children and then they'll pull their pants up and they'll hold their heads up. Because they have a history and right. they understand from a safe exactly. country. Coming back with more with Cheryl Wills. We're right here on Perspectives talking about her book, Die Free, A Heroic Family Tale. We'll be right back right after this. Flashlight and the batteries? Yes. Did 
did you make sure we're not missing anything in the first aid kit? Yep. Did you go through the plan with the kids again? Yes. The more you prepare today, the more you'll be able to reduce the devastating effects of a tornado, an earthquake, a power outage, or any other disaster. So here are the keys. Congratulations, it's officially yours. I'm sure you'll have many happy years here. Except for you, because you'll be gone three years from now, struck down by the same disease that got your father. So you won't be around for them. And sadly, it could have been detected early with a simple test, but you didn't have it. Okay, who wants to check out the backyard? For a list of tests every man should have, go to ahrq.gov. Did you know that getting up and getting active for just 60 minutes a day is all it takes to help you get stronger, look better, and feel great? Or that fresh fruits and veggies aren't just healthier and crunchier, they can taste better too? Eating better and getting more active is easier than you think. Yeah! yeah. Keep watching for some fun and easy ways to discover the magic of healthy living in your life. America, let's get healthy together! Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Mom. There is also a very attractive extended warranty option that includes free service and parts for the next five years. But there's no need for you to get that. You failed to get the test you needed at the doctor that would have detected disease early enough where it could have been treated. So you won't be around in two years to see him grow up, which means the warranty would be useless. Okay, sign here, please. For a list of tests every man should have, go to ahrq.gov. And back with our conversation with Cheryl Wills. And uh, as we were, I was thinking during the break, I said, you know, here it is that you've had the opportunity to expose mm -hmm. us to your family. Mm -hmm. What's the reaction like amongst family mm. finding out about family? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, the book is not only about Sandy, but I bring it full circle. Mm -hmm. And I also talk about my father was a New York City firefighter, part of the first wave during the 70s where blacks really started to integrate the fire department and he worked at Engine One and he was full of life and just wonderful man, father of five children, I was the oldest, and then he lost his way. Now, keep in mind, he fought during the Vietnam era. Mm. The soldier had no idea that his great-great-grandfather fought in the Civil War. See what happens when you don't know your history? Right. He would have been emboldened by that. He would have been enriched by that. Mm -hmm. But when you don't know who your own family is, mm -hmm. it can take a toll on you. So my father ended up dying in a horrific motorcycle accident at the age of 38 on the Williamsburg Bridge. He was almost decapitated. Mm. while his wife and his five little children were all home asleep in their beds. And some people didn't want me to bring that whole story up, mm. namely my mom, because my dad really lost his way joining the motorcycle club. And, you know, he kept his job at the fire department, but he was doing things he shouldn't have been doing. Mm. And it was a little debate in the family, like, how much are we going to tell about daddy? I told it all mm. because I feel that my fa I vindicated his transgressions mm. because I firmly believe that had he known he would have been a different man. He wouldn't have given up the fight mm. for his family if he had known that Sandy, an illiterate slave, stayed with his wife and nine kids to the bitter end. Mm. Well, surely my father, a hundred years later, with indoor plumbing, central air, and everything else, could have stayed with his family but when you don't have the perspective mm -hmm. and you don't you're not grounded you're like a leaf blowing in the wind so the family was a little torn but everyone came together because i told the truth right. you know my grandmother wasn't too crazy about me telling about her husband who was a preacher who lost his way mm -hmm. and didn't really live up to everything he preached about but at 85 you know she kind of had an attitude of 
Just get it right and tell the truth. So I told the truth about it, and I think that's why people love the book, because I tell the truth. And in real-life family situations, there are skeletons. That's right. And, you know, it's good to get it all out the and, closet. And, and I think everybody has the skeletons. Everybody. And everybody has, and Every everybody family. Has, everybody's got the family drama. <laughs> but yet and still, when the family drama can come to a place of blessing, then obviously, and this, and exactly. this, and this absolutely uh, does that. Give us a little bit about this because we talk about this is Black History mm -hmm. Month. Kids are watching, mm -hmm. and it's important for kids to know history, right? And their importance if, of mm -hmm. history, mm -hmm. and that's what we've been we've been sharing a little bit about. Right. If you know your history, it means it means so much more. What kind of responses are you getting when you share the history? You know, I see children, and they they're almost embarrassed by what they don't know. And you almost don't know who to blame. Where does it start? With the parents, with the teachers, with the textbooks? You don't know where to start blaming. Mm -hmm. So rather than blaming, it's best just to teach them. And the children always, their eyes open up, and they want to touch me because they're like, your grandpa fought in the Civil War. You know, they, that's special to them. And I bring slavery alive. It's no longer a concept or something that happened so long ago. Now look at me. It happened to my family. Mm -hmm. And they have a, oh, really? Mm -hmm. You know? And with young boys in particular, you could see them go, wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know we could do that. I didn't know we ever transitioned from something so bad into something so good. They really don't know. When they look back in history for African Americans, all they get is Martin Luther King. Well, Martin Luther King, great man. God bless his spirit and his soul. But African-American history is more than Martin Luther King. There were many leaders that made Martin Luther King possible. And King himself acknowledged that many right. times. So I see a change happening when I talk to the young people. And we want to tell people, you should get this book, Die Free, a heroic family tale. Tells a story about African-Americans, a family throughout the course of the Civil War. And yes, Cheryl Wills is the author. You see here on New York One, but she's here with us sharing her perspective. How are you juggling all this real quick? Oh, it's really tough, but it is a blessing and a joy. I don't sleep much these days, mm -hmm. but it's the best loss of sleep I've ever had. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we encourage you to make sure that where people, where can people get the Oh, book? please, diefreethebook.com, diefreethebook.com. You can see everything there. You can see my speech to the United Nations, um, many of the speeches I've given all over the world, and also it's available on Barnes & Noble, Amazon.com, Human Human Bookstore in Harlem, the historic mm -hmm. Human Bookstore, and many other national retail outlets. Well, we told you, you see all the information at the bottom of the screen where you can actually find out where you can get Die Free. And thank you so much for coming. Pleasure, Cheryl. Darren. Good Keep to up the good work thank on you. this really great show. Thank you so much. Cheryl Wills, our guest here, and we want to encourage you. Listen, if you want to find out more about us, we'll, you can catch us on Facebook, Bronx Net Perspectives. We've got our own page. Also, we'll be tweeting and letting you know what's coming up and uh, throughout the course of Black History Month. But the one thing about Black History is we always said, in order to know where you're going, you have, first have to know where you've come from. This book here helps people to understand where they've come from and also where we can go. And so thank you to Cheryl for making that possible, but also thank you to everyone whose shoulders did we stand on so that way we can be able to stand and do the things that we do today. Because while you see many people standing, it's some hard, big or tall shoulders we've actually stood on. For all of us here on The Set of Perspectives, I'm Darren Jaime. Thank you for watching. Until the next time we meet, stay safe and share your perspective with somebody else because it just might make a difference in their life. Take care.